This documents my understanding of how the conventions for Unix command line syntax have evolved. Over time, it's not properly sourced, and may well be quite wrong. I've not been using Unix until 1989, so I wasn't there for the early years. Maybe someone has written a proper essay on this, with citations. I'm too lazy to dig them up. The early 1970s in the beginning, in the first year or so of Unix, an idea was formed for what a Unix program would be like. It would be given some number of file names as command line arguments, and it would read those. If no file names were given, it would read the standard input. It would write its output to the standard output. There might be a small number of other fixed command line arguments. Options didn't exist. This allowed programs to be easily combined. One program's output could be the input of another. There were, of course, variations. The echo command didn't read anything. The CP, MV, and ERM commands didn't output anything. However, the filter was ideal. $cat asterisk.txt. WC in the example above. The cat program reads all files with names with a.txt suffix and writes them to its standard output, which is then piped to the WC program, which reads its standard input. It wasn't given any file names to count words. In short, the pipeline above counts words in all text files. This was quite powerful. It was also very simple. Options fairly quickly. The developers of Unix found that many programs would be more useful if the user could choose between minor variations of function. For example, the sort program could provide the option to order input lines without consideration to the upper and lower case of the text. The command line option was added. This seems to have resulted in a bit of a philosophical discussion among the developers. Some were adamant against options, fearing the complexity it would bring, and others really liked them, for the convenience. The side favoring options 1. To make command line parsing easy to implement. Options always started with a single dash and consisted of a single character. Multiple options could be packed after one dash, so that foo abc could be shortened to foo abc. If not immediately, then soon after, an additional twist was added. Some options required a value. For example, the sort program could be given the kn option, where n is an integer specifying which word in a line would be used for sorting. The syntax for values was a little complicated. The value could follow the option letter as part of the same command line argument, or be the next argument. The following two commands thus mean the same thing. $sort k1 $sort k1 at this point. Command line parsing became more than just iterating over the command line arguments. The dominant language for Unix was C, and a lot of programs implemented the command line parsing themselves. This was unfortunate, but at this stage, the parsing was still sufficiently simple that most of them did it insufficiently a similar way that it didn't cause any serious problems. However, it was now the case that one often needed to check the manual, or experiment, to find out how a specific program was to be used. Later on, Wikipedia says 1980, the C library function getopt was written. It became part of the Unix C standard library. It implemented the command line parsing. Described above. It was written in C, which at that time was quite a primitive programming language, and this resulted in a simplistic API. Part of that API is that if the user used an unknown option on the command line, the getOps function would return a question mark, as its value. Some programs would respond by writing out a short usage blurb. This led to, is sometimes, used to tell a program to show a help text. Long options in the late 1970s, Unix spread from its birthplace, Bell Labs, to other places, mostly universities. Much experimentation followed. During 
The 1980s some changes to command line syntax happened. The biggest change here was long options. Options whose name wasn't just a single character. For example, in the new X window system, the display option would be used to select which display to use for a GUI program. Note the single dash. This clashed with the clumping together of the single character option. Does display mean which display to use, or are the options DISPLAY clumped together? This depended on the program and how it decided to parse the options. A further complication to parsing the command line was that single dash long options that took values couldn't allow the value to be part of the same command line argument. Thus, display zero, two words, was correct, but it could not be written as display zero, because a simple C command line parser would have difficulty figuring out what was the option name and what was the option's value. Thus, what previously might have been written as a single argument D, zero now became two arguments. The world did not end, but a little more complexity had landed in the world of Unix command line syntax. The GNU project The new project was first announced in 1983. It was to be an operating system similar to Unix. One of the changes it made was to command line syntax. New introduced another long option syntax, I believe to disambiguate the single dash long option confusion with clumped single character options. Initially, new used the plus to indicate a long option but quickly changed to a double dash. This made it unambiguous whether a long option or clumped short options were being used. I believe it was also new that introduced using the equals sign smiley face to optionally add a value to a long option. Values to options could be optional. Color could mean the same as color equals auto, but you could also say color equals never if you didn't like the default value. New further allowed options to occur anywhere on the command line, not just at the beginning. This made things more convenient for the user. New also wrote a C function, getopt underscore long, to unify command line parsing across the software produced by the project. I believe it supported the single dash long options from the start. Some new programs, such as the C compiler, used those. Thus, the following was acceptable. $grepshi.txt, regxp equals foo, regxp bar the Example above clumps the short options x and i into one argument, and provided grep with two regular expression patterns, one with an equals, and one without. The new changes have largely been adopted by other Unix variants. I'm sure those have had their own changes, but I've not followed them enough to know. New also added standard options. Almost every new program supports the options help, version, and, mail equals addr.1 double dash around this time, a further convention was added. An argument of two dashes only, as a way to say that no further options to the command being invoked would follow. I believe this was another new change, but I have no evidence. This is useful to, say, be able to remove a file with a name that starts with a dash. Dollar erm, f for erm, it was always possible to provide a fully qualified path, starting from the root directory, or to prefix the file name with a directory, erm, f, and so this convention is not necessary for removing files. However, given all new programs use the same function for command line parsing, erm gets it for free. Other Unix variants may not have that support though so users need to be careful. The double dash is more useful for other situations, such as when invoking a program that invokes another program. An example is the cargo tool for the Rust language. To build and run a program and tell it to report its version, you would use the following command. 
dollar cargo run version without the double dash you would be telling cargo to report its version subcommands i think of around the late 1980s subcommands were added to the unix command line syntax conventions subcommands were a response to many unix programs gaining a large number of options that were in fact not optional at all and were really commands thus a program might have options decrypt and encrypt and the user was required to use one of them but not both this turned out to be a little hard for many people to deal with and subcommands were a simplification instead of using option syntax for commands just require commands instead i believe the oldest program that uses subcommands is the version control system sccs from 1972 but i haven't been able to find out which version added subcommands another version control system cvs from 1990 seems to have had them at the beginning cvs was built on top of yet another version control system rcs which had programs such as c for check in and co for check out cvs had a single program with subcommands dollar cvs c dollar cvs co dot 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 later version control systems such as subversion arch and git follow the subcommand pattern version control systems seem to inherently require the user to do a number of distinct operations which fits the subcommand style well and also avoids adding large numbers of individual programs commands to the shell reducing name collisions subcommands add further complications to command line syntax though when inevitably combined with options the main command may have options often called global options but so can subcommands when options can occur anywhere on the command line is version a global option or specific to a subcommand worse how does a program parse a command line if an option is specific to a subcommand the parsing needs to know which subcommand if only so it knows whether the options require a value are not to solve this some programs require global options to be before the subcommand which is easy to implement others allow them anywhere everything seems to require per subcommand options to come after the subcommand summary the early unix developers who feared complexity were right but also wrong it would be intolerable to have a separate program for every combination of a program with options to be fair i don't think that's what they would have advocated instead i think they would have advocated tools that can be combined and simplify things so that fewer tools are needed that's not what happened alas and we live in a world with a bit more complex than is strictly speaking needed if we were redesigning unix from scratch and didn't need to be backward compatible we could introduce a completely new syntax that is systematic easy to remember easy to use and easy to implement alas